Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Blue liquor shells, dust, lace, orange, peasants, vessels, minions, meat sacks. I'm a useful idiot. And today I want to talk about the passing of H.R. Giger, uh, an amazing uh, Swiss surrealist artist. And uh, most people are familiar with his work because he managed to have some success in pop culture. And uh, as, as uh, most of my regulars know, I usually stick to geopolitical uh, topics, but art, music, and literature were my first love. And uh, therefore, I occasionally uh, note the passing or significance of uh, an artist who is uh, an icon of mine, certainly, and uh, generally an artist of uh, innovation and some giants uh, from the 20th century. And H.R. Giger is certainly that. Um, he started uh, art studies in, in the 60s and uh, gradually moved into design and sculpture and painting and uh, was noted for his work. Uh, called uh, biomechanoids, and that's uh, represented by this sort of work where he uh, juxtaposed organic and uh, industrial elements together and created these uh, unforgettable images. I remember first coming across his work on the cover of uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer's Brain Salad Surgery. I think that was about 1974, and I was very impressed with his work then and kept track, and uh, he's uh, shown up on a lot more album covers and is most noted for his design work creating the creatures and the sets for the unforgettable uh, Alien series of movies and he, he did work for all four and he also was uh, contracted to uh, work on the original uh, version of Dune that was going to be done by the visionary director Joe Dorowski and uh, that thing uh, was almost put into uh, full production and never quite made it but it would have been uh, incredible and although his uh, Giger's designs were uh, used in uh, the other remake of uh, Dune as well, so we see his work there as well. And uh, like all, all geniuses and, and innovators, he was a, a singularity. There really is no other artist uh, working in the genre uh, and, and creating quite, quite the same body of work as someone like H.R. Giger. And he was influenced by uh, someone who's also one of my favorites, uh, Ernst Fuchs, and, uh, who is also another complete individual and innovator and the fact that they uh, 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 Giger was influenced by someone like that is no surprise and, uh, he was also championed by Salvador Dali who, who he also considered a, a mentor and a peer and uh, so this uh, helped uh, push his career along but uh, I will attach uh, some other uh, material about H.R. Giger below and uh, I'm sure most people are familiar with his work it's a little a little dark for most. Um, I, I, I grew to really uh, enjoy his work immensely, uh, studying the concept of the sublime. And the sublime is the idea of the beautiful and terrifying uh, juxtaposed together. And some of my favorite artists uh, use this uh, uh, same sort of idea. Francis Bacon and Yvonne Chilet come to mind. Um, this, uh, this making a, something beautiful out of the grotesque. Uh, combining the beautiful and the terrifying, and uh, there's no better example of that kind of work than H.R. Uh, Giger. So uh, we uh, mourn the passing today. It's uh, 74, um, uh, complications from the fall, uh, but he's left behind an incredible body of work and uh, an amazing H.R. Uh, Giger museum, and uh, some some of the most memorable moments in uh, uh, cinema history. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too.